everyone. Um, I'm going to talk about a typical question that you might see in a technical interview. So I'll be talking about my process as I'm approaching these kinds of questions. And I'll also talk about some of the things that I might say if I were to get this question in a real interview. So the problem I'm going to talk about is word search. So this question is on leak code. So feel free to try it out after this video if you're interested. So I think the first most important step um, of uh, doing these questions is to actually read the problem statement and understand what is going on and what you're expected to do. So it looks like for this question, we're given a 2D board and word as input, and we need to find if the word exists in our grid. So our word can be constructed from letters of sequentially adjacent cells, where adjacent cells are either horizontally or vertically neighboring. And it looks like we also cannot use the same letter in the same cell more than once. So that seems fairly straightforward. Um, I guess if this was a real interview, I might ask other clarifying questions like, is this going to be case sensitive? Or if I get something like an empty string, like what is it expected to return? Um, it looks like that these questions are clarified in this constraint section. And generally, leak code problems or problems that you find online should be pretty well specified just because you don't have an actual human to interact with. But sometimes in interviewers, uh, sometimes in interviews, the interviewers will actually leave out parts of the question or like some details and hope that like you actually ask clarifying questions. So it's important to like take a deep breath and think about the problem and see if there's like any potential like holes in the problem description just to make sure that like you have all the information you need to solve it. Alrighty, so this problem seems uh fairly straightforward right now or like the description seems straightforward so it's good to just like run through some examples to make sure that we really have the correct understanding of the problem so thankfully they provide some sample inputs and outputs so it's good to run through these just to make sure that we know that we're actually interpreting the questions correctly so for the first input they give us a b c c e d so it looks like we can go a b c c e d and that gives us a valid path, so we return true. Um, the second input is C, so if we go S, E, E, that returns true, so that's also okay. And then A, B, C, B goes A, B, C, B, but we're reusing this B, so we should return false because um, we're not allowed to do that. Okay, so now that we understand the problem, um, the next thing that we want to do is start sketching out our general approach. So just to reiterate, our goal is to find a sequence of characters in board that spells out the given word. So for the general approach, um, we should just like think about what tools we have in our toolbox that might be relevant for solving this problem. So the first thing that comes to me is uh, graphs. So I think that we could actually turn this question into a graph question, potentially. Because if I'm trying to find a sequence of characters in the boards, it kind of reminds me of trying to find a path from some start vertex to an end vertex. And if I'm looking for this path, then it's like, oh, maybe I could use some kind of dra uh, graph traversal to determine if I can actually get from that start vertex to an end vertex. Um, so I guess the way that we could construct our graph is by making letters like vertices and edges as valid transition between letters. So if I'm looking at this like F over here, um, I could imagine that there's an edge that goes to B, another edge that goes to C, another that goes to D, and another that goes to S. So for a general approach, we'll think of board as a graph. So vertex equals letters, edges equals valid uh, transitions between letters. And we can use some graph traversal to actually explore the different paths. So I think that maybe it would make sense to use a DFS here. So we can use DFS find a path. So the reason that I chose DFS over BFS is because I'm looking for like 
a very specific path and I think that it makes sense to explore as deep as I can before deciding that like oh maybe this path isn't really worth exploring anymore. Um, I also like to keep track of my constraints so I think something that I might forget to do later so I'll keep this in the back of my mind is that the same letter uh, the same letter cell cannot be used more than once so uh, cannot use the same cell more than once. So now that we have a general approach to how we want to solve this problem, um, I think the next good step to take is to break down our problem into smaller manageable chunks. So I think the first maybe step that we have to take is to figure out where to start our DFS. So step one, so choose start for DFS. So I guess like with this problem, we could potentially have a word begin at any cell in our board. So I think what we can do is that we can keep track of a Boolean called exists. So exists basically will tell us whether we found the word in our board or not. Um, and right now we'll now loop through every single entry in our board and basically run a DFS on all of them. And if for any of them the DFS returns true, then we're going to return true for our method. So yeah, we'll do that. So we'll say for i and i equals zero, i is less than four dot length, i plus plus. And then since this is a 2D array, we'll also need to do an inner for loop. So for int j equals zero, j is less than forward two dot length, j plus plus. So I'm going to do a DFS on every single entry in our board because who knows, we could start at any uh, entry. So I'll say exists equals, and then I'll do a DFS. So I'll pretend like I actually have this DFS method already written. Um, so I'll just say DFS. Um, I'll start at position i comma j. Um, I'm going to do my DFS on the board. And I also will say that like, oh, we're going to do it on word. And then we'll also like have to pa probably pass in like which character we're looking at. So I'll say zero. So we might change these parameters later. So this is a little bit rough so we can tweak it as we go. But the general idea is that we'll run a DFS. And then if it returns true, that means we found our word. So we can just like immediately return. So if exists, then we can return true and otherwise return false. Okay, so the second part of this problem is to actually write the DFS to determine if the path that actually spells the word exists or not. So step two, uh, do a DFS to determine if the path that spells word exists. So I think that this is probably the more involved part of this problem. So it's going to be a little bit harder than step one. Um, yeah, so I'll write the method header. So I'll say public boolean uh, dfs int i int j char oops, char board string word int index. So this is a little bit of a mouthful, so we can write down actually what each of these parameters mean. So i and j so these are going to be like the position that we're currently at in our board so it's like position that we are examining in board board is just the array that they give us in the beginning of the problem so board uh tar board given originally oops the problem Word is the word that they also passed in for the problem. So word, word we are trying to uh, construct. And then index is the current character that we're looking at in our DFS. Okay, so I like to implement my DFS recursively. Um, you can definitely feel free to do whatever is most comfortable for you. 
Um, but I'll be talking about like a recursive approach to writing this. So with recursion, um, I think that it's important to break down your base case and your recursive case and make those really clear. So for our base case, um, for our base case, um, I think that this will happen when we've already looked through our entire word. And we'll know that we finished looking at through our entire word when our index is equal to word.length because that'll be past the last character in our word. So we've already looked through the entire word. So if index is equal to word.length, then we're done and we can return true. If we've gotten to this point, then that means that we've basically um, found a path that includes all of the previous letters as well. Um, for our recursive case, this means that we still need to look through our words, so we need to like potentially like continue doing our DFS. So we are looking at a character in the word. Okay, so already. Um, so the first thing that we should do is to first get the character that we're actually looking at. So we'll say char character equals, and I'll say word dot char at index. So this is like the letter that we're trying to match up with in our path. So like, um, if we were doing C over here, the first, the very first time that like we're doing our DFS, we would index would be zero, so we'd be looking at this S, and then in our next iteration of DFS, we might look at these E's. So that would be like the, so that would be like the character at index one. So we're getting the character that we're looking at. And now we want to see if it matches with our current position or not. So we'll see if board ij equals equals character. Then we need to explore neighbors. So see if the next character word is one of our neighbors. So I guess like going back to this C example, if we were at this S over here, we need to continue doing our DFS on all of its neighbors to see if like if like we can potentially like find a path. So I'll say Boolean result equals DFS I plus one J board word index plus one. So this is going to be like one of the recursive calls that we're making. So we might need to check the, uh, the, we'll need to like call DFS on the cell that's like right above our current one. So we'll look at our neighbor that's above our current thing. So for C, we would look at this E up here. So this is our neighbor that's above. We should also look at the neighbor that's below. So DFS I minus one J board word index plus one. Um, we should also look at the things that are to our left and to our right. So we'll also do it on DFS uh, I J plus one board word index plus one. And we should also look at our neighbor on the left as well. So DFS I J minus one board word index plus one. So this result will give us the, so this result will basically tell us whether we found like, the, if we found like an appropriate like DFS, uh, if we found like a path by doing DFS on any of the neighbors. So we'll just like or all of these together and then we'll return results when we're done. So I guess like if the character that we were looking at was uh, not equal to like the current entry, then we can just return false right here. Uh, oops. Alrighty. So I think, all right, so we've done like this DFS over here. So something that you might've noticed is like, hey, if we're like on the borders over here, we might not have a neighbor that's like above or like to the left or something. Like if we're this A, we only have neighbors that are to our right and below. 
So that means that we'll have to do some bounds checking to make sure that, we're, that we actually um, are in a valid location. So we'll do some bounds checking here. Uh, I'll actually do this below this comment. So, so we want to make sure that i is going to be within the height of our board, zero and the height of our board, and we want to make sure that uh, j is within zero and the width of our board. So we want to make sure that zero, that i is between zero and board dot length, and also that j is between zero and the width. Okay, so if it's out of these bounds, then we want to immediately return false. So I'll just write a check that does that. So I'll say if i is less than zero, or i is greater than or equal to four dot length, or j is less than zero, or j is greater than or equal to four zero dot length, then I want to return false because I'm not going to be in bounds. Okay, so this is just like a basic DFS. So we've solved probably most of our problem up to this point, but we still haven't actually finished uh, dealing with this constraint, which is that we can't use the same cell more than twice. Um, I'm just going to run the code to make sure that like we've solved at least like part of this problem because I think that our code will at least compile and solve some cases. Um, so let's just hit run code. And okay, so it looks like it accepted it on this input, um, which is good news. So I guess like now that we've gotten it working for part of the problem, we can start to actually think about how we're going to implement visited or to see like, or it's like to make sure that we're not visiting the same cell more than once. Okay, so now let's try to see if we can figure out how to actually um, take this constraint that we cannot use the same cell more than once uh, in, into like our DFS. So I think there's like multiple ways that we could potentially like keep track of what we've visited. Um, I think what might be easiest for this problem is keeping track of another 2D array uh, that has the same dimensions as board, but holds Booleans, which represent whether that cell has been visited or not. So I think that we could do that, but having maybe a visited 2D array. So I guess like we're probably going to be responsible for updating this and also checking it to make sure that, uh, yeah, that we're like not revisiting things. So I guess let's add this to our list of parameters. Uh, this is a very long list, but that's okay. So uh, keeps track of cells or yeah, cells that we have visited. Uh, true if visit if cell visited false otherwise. So for each entry. All right. So I think. So like it looks like our base case should be unaffected. Bounds checking should also be unaffected. But when we're looking at this check over here, if board i j equals character. We should also make sure that um, we haven't visited uh, the location at ij yet. So I'm also going to throw an a and not already visited. So once we actually enter this if statement, that means that basically we're choosing to explore um, this path. So like for c over here for the second example, um, this might go into the for loop of this might go into this if statement the first time. And when we actually like say, okay, like this is true, like before we actually start doing our DFS on like its neighbors, we should mark this location as visited already. So I'll say visited i j equals true. Okay. So now we're going to do a DFS on all of its neighbors. And this part is a little bit tricky, but we'll also have to mark our node as unvisited after we finish like doing our DFS. And this is because we might potentially explore some path and then partway through we'll notice, oh, like 
it looks like that we didn't actually find our word. But we don't want to prevent like any future DFSs from exploring those paths. So, so we should mark ourselves as not visited. So we're not like blocking any future like DFSs or anything. So let's say visited ij equals false. So we're just kind of undoing our marking over here. Um, I think that that's all that we actually need to do for this method to keep track of visited or not. So yeah, um, we'll also need to fix our uh, method call over here because we added in another thing. So we'll also need to add some visited array. Um, we can just probably construct it at the beginning over here. So I'll say uh, boolean visit equals new boolean. And I want this to have the same dimensions as my board. So I'll say board.length and board zero dot length. So this is a kind of ugly dec declaration, but oh well, it happens. <laughs> so let's try running our code again to see if it works. Oh, uh, looks like I also forgot to update um, the method calls over here at the bottom. So I'll just do that now. So we can just pass in our visited array into each of these. And let's try running it again. Uh, looks like there's one more. Boolean cannot be cast to char. Oh yeah, I accidentally declared this wrong. It should be a Boolean. Uh, hopefully this time it'll be correct. Okay, so it looks like it, it accepted it. So we didn't, we might have not broken anything earlier. So now we can try hitting submit. Here are all my other submissions. Okay, so it looks like this is a success. Uh, maybe not the best, but I think that this is like a reasonable approach to this problem. Looks like it it got accepted anyways. Um, there's definitely a couple optimizations that we can make. Like we might not need this visited array. We could like potentially just like change the inputs directly in our board over here. Although I guess like it, it makes a little bit more sense. Like I guess like logically when explaining it have this other array. Um, we could do other code cleanup too if we wanted. Like I think that having this boolean exists is a little bit redundant. So maybe instead of writing this, we could just tidy it up and just get rid of this and saying if doing this DFS returns true, then we can just return true directly. So this is just equivalent uh, making the code look a little bit nicer. But yeah, I think that this is probably an acceptable solution to this problem. Um, and I think that like, if you gave this solution during an interviewer, the interviewer would probably be uh, fine with it. They might ask you different questions about time complexity or space complexity afterwards, or they might ask about potential optimizations, although you might not be asked to implement them. And yeah, uh, hopefully that helps. Uh, and if you're practicing any similar problems, Good luck. Hopefully this approach generally helps.